Hello everybody and welcome to In The News or whatever the hell I call this thing. Uh, and today we have multiple topics as you can see by the array of tabs I have open. Um, this was going to be, this is sort of slightly older news because um, about I've sort of had five days of being sick if you can possibly tell my voice still isn't fully back to normal. <coughs> so we have some news, some slightly old news. I've added a few things on since and obviously some news has been updated. Um, some news is sort of product releases in general, some uh, news is personal to me, which sounds slightly wrong, but anyway. My Voltager has been returned, so if you didn't watch the, so this is a Voltager, if you didn't watch the latest video in the Voltager shenanigans, this is the Hobby King customer support uh, video that I did. So they confirmed, watch that and watch all of the Voltager videos really, um, they confirmed that the UK address was correct. Because I showed them the website, um, sent it back. They then, and as I say, there'll be a, a full video explaining the second part of the Hobby King slash PayPal customer support. Because Hobby King haven't got in contact with me other than a PM on RC groups. So fantastic! I sent it back, um, and I gave them the tracking number. You can't just drop a message. What I ended up having to do was write it in a um, Word document. Well, a LibreOffice document um, then export it as a PDF and attach that with a tracking number on it uh, they said that my that I never sent a tracking number to them even though I did um, they closed the case rang up and they said and the woman said yeah basically uh, people are fucked up here um, well, she didn't exactly say that but understand me. what they were trying to say is that the tracking number was invalid but she says even that's not right really she says all it is is it's proved that you've delivered a parcel to someone and it has been signed by somebody. K. Ellis, I think, is the person who signed for it. But for some reason, on the Parcel Force website, there wasn't an address it had been delivered to. So I scanned the receipt from the post office and the receipt from um, Parcel Force Online. Um, I scanned them both, attached them as pictures. They then came back to me and said. Oh, that's wrong. That's not good enough. We've closed your case again. So tomorrow, today is Sunday. On Monday, I will ring and say, look, I've already said to one bloke, I've, you know, I've t called you two times because of issues with this case where it's being closed for no reason. Third time, it's, you know, third time I've rung you, uh, you know, fix it. Um, what it might be is that technically the address I've sent it to is Lucky Stuff Limited because that's what Hobby King's called in the UK cause probably for tax reasons you know it doesn't say on that parcel force document either Hobby King which is what the website is called or Hextronic which is what the company is called in PayPal they seem to have different names like I think what it is is Hextronic is the holding company and then Hobby King, Turnergy, Lucky Stuff Limited um, and a few other companies are all owned by Hextronic. I think that's the way that they're structured. Or Hextronic and everything else is under Hobby King. Or basically they've got loads of different companies. That are then sandwiched under one brand. Which I'm pretty sure is Hextronic. Because um, they used to be called Hobby City at one point. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So Hextronic or Hobby City that got called Hobby King. Alright. I will probably make an edit there. Um. Just to soften that down. So yeah, they did used to be called Hobby City and Hextronic, I think, and then got called Hobby King. Anyway, um, so so yeah, so basically, I'm gonna have to say to them tomorrow. Look, Lucky Stuff Limited is what their warehouse is called in the UK, probably to get around tax because uh, you don't buy, t you don't pay tax on any products you're buying from the UK warehouse. Um, and I'm gonna show you where I found this information. So if you go to 24 Hour Support Center, OBS is happy yes. Warranty claim and return policies. Uh, see all. There's free UK return shipping. That is a con. If you do it through there, they will not refund you the shipping you spent at Hobby King. Um, they just won't do it. Um, so what I've done is I'm going to get a full refund through PayPal for the plane and the shipping. And then I've signed up through PayPal's uh, claim postage, return postage back, thingy Bob, And that was going to claim my 13 quid from Parcel Force 4. So anyway, go to see all articles. Um, can I return my items to the nearest warehouse location? Click that. And then here are all the addresses. Even for warehouses which no longer exist. Um, I know one of them don't, doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but look, United Kingdom Warehouse. Lucky Stuff Limited. There is the address. So I can basically say to PayPal, look, I ordered it from Hobby King. 
the United King warehouse, here is the address. I've already told one person this, but obviously I didn't put it in the right fucking section. Um, so, yes, Hobby King, I mean, what, I sent it back, I, I started the claim on the 26th of January, it's now the 12th of February as I record this. What a load of ball, like, and P PayPal are sort of doing their best, but it's going a bit at the moment. Um, it's because PayPal, uh, it's because Hobby King has set out like a proper company to avoid tax, as I say. Um, so, speaking of other planes I've been having nightmare issues with, the Night Vision Air and Horizon Hobbies issues, and again, I'll do a separate video on how this worked. So, when um, I suggested to them that uh, a £50 partial refund for me to get my own motor speed controller would be fine, I didn't hear from them for ages, as per usual, and I... So what I did is I installed my own receiver, got rid of the gyro stabilization and whatnot, um, and installed a brushed speed controller to turn the lights on and off on my radio. Um, since then they said about returning the whole thing or whatever, um, and I flew it. I flew it when they gave me the new motor speed controller, still crappy. I put this brushed speed controller, and the brushless one is obviously still there, and a new receiver, and it flies, it, the, it seems to have more power. I don't know if it's a fault with my Spectrum receiver that came with it, or, or what, but Futaba Radio, Futaba 617 receiver, it yeah, now has more power. Someone who has one of these, who is also not particularly by the way, says he wished he had such a bit, because I was complaining about how underpowered it how under power it was he said he wished I that he had the same problem as my as me because I was joking that it had well I wasn't joking I was saying it had no power he jokingly said I wish I had such little power as you because it flies you know it's got enough power I almost said it flies nicely it doesn't it flies shite it really isn't a very nice thing to fly it probably doesn't help that I've taken the gyros out of it but the problem is is I think so the servos are in the middle of the plane about there and you've got these giant 3d surfaces over here on a little bit of wire so you put a big load of elevator and it only puts about half in as the wire bends um, so I just don't like it it's not nice to fly um, and it's kind of annoying that you know I bought I bought the voltager to be the replacement for this um, but now this works it's sort of uh... So yeah, I'm not very happy with it, and Horizon Hobby just stopped talking to me in the end, because I, I said to them, and this may have slightly backfired, I basically said, I think you caught, I, I, when I got emailed by two different people, I ended up talking with one person, when that one person I felt was taking the piss out of me, I emailed the second person and said, hey, I don't want to talk to him, I think he's taking the piss, I want to talk with you instead. Never received anything again. I even mailed the first bloke nothing. I don't know if they've blocked me or what the fuck they've done, but they don't want to talk to me. So, like, that's just a load of bollocks, and... I've now even crossed off the um, uh, rare bear off of the off of my future planes list, which I actually I actually have one of those. I might show it one day just to share it. Um, but yeah, the Horizon Hobby I will never support again. I'll try not to anyway. They're such a large company; it's hard not to. That's the big issue. It's like saying I won't support Parcel Force. Because if you order stuff from abroad, the amount of stuff that comes through Parcel Force, I hate Parcel Force, but I've got to put up with them. Uh, so what's next in my tablets? That's just another one. So that's to sort of show, look, it's 200 quid's worth this plane. The Bannerfly Basic, which is the only version you can get, I'm pretty sure. You know, RRP 232 quid. What a fucking piece of shit. Um, so next, something incredibly cute. I was going on the Ritmax website to look for something, and this was scrolling as one of the latest things. Look how cute it is! So my first plane was a Watt 4, a Watt 4 Mark III, you know, kit that I built together at the age of, like, 7. So I started flying when I was 5, I got my first plane at 7. Uh, me and my dad both built one. And that is not foam, ladies and gentlemen, that is a wood plane. Uh, and I've seen them for £99. No one ever seems to listen to Ritmax RRP, but yeah, the Watt 4 Mini. You know, so it's, it's, it's got a 5 by 5 by 4 by 5 propeller on it. It's a 2S. 10 amp brushless speed controller. So it comes with servos. As I say, most places doing it for £99. Not out yet, but... So I've just finished recording, but I want to stick something on the end of this, what, 4 section. Plug and play when, sort of, Park Zone and Hangar 9 and E-Fly, you know, Horizon Hobby stuff, pioneered. It was very simple. The whole idea was, you plug your receiver in, 
you pl you plug in your own battery you know so the only items you need are um, battery charger transmitter receiver you plug in your receiver you plug in a battery program the radio go fly well this is supposedly RX ready so that should be even more than plug and play it's basically their version of plug and play but you know it says you need a four to five channel transmitter receiver that's fair enough four hundred millimeter extension leads which is a bit of a pain uh, cyano glue that's that's sort of understandable I prefer glue than clip together in all honesty 2S battery that's fine female JST connector for the speed controller that's very strange and various hand tools so I genuinely think that you have to put this model together yeah it says the mini what for is a beautiful wooden ARTF with an electronics package ready for you to start assembly so <coughs> Someone might think this is plug and play. It's not. You've got to build it. It just comes with an electronics package. It annoys me because the, the whole idea of plug and play to me is transmitter, receiver, battery, charger. You know, Hobby King have started doing it saying you have to include your own speed controller. It just... And that's why you really do need to read the required to complete stuff. But anyway... Uh, on to the next topic. It's so pretty. In the same release, they um, released the Watt 4 Pro. Yes, yeah, so this is the Watt 4 Pro. It's 220 pounds. Oh, it just doesn't look very nice. And it comes with an Irving 39. Fun fly edition. But like, look at the undercarriage. Oh, for lightness, we put holes in it. And... Also, if you're getting Ritmax products, never buy quartz servos. They're rebranded turnages. They actually are. I've checked that out. Um, with the next topic, you'll see what I did. Um, so, yeah. Ah, uh, why? Why don't you make an electric pro or a pro e or an e pro or something like that? But oh god, what a mistake! But that thing is so cute that um, when I have some dispensable income, it will be purchased for you know just old times' sake. Such a fun little thing. You know, that little, as it says, perfect for part flyers, but oh, such a lovely little thing. Wheels look giant on it, but that's probably to get off the grass and stuff. So, yes, that is delicious. Another thing which scrolled past on the Ritmax website, it's just hooking me in, is the, not that, that's horrendous. The JSM Mini Excalibur E. So, um, someone at our club had a regular sized Excalibur with a Ren 88 I think it's got it you know turbine um, there's a small incident um, and I looked into the Mini Excalibur at the time and the, the regular the non-E version uh, for a JetCat P20 which if you take a, a Mini one and the JetCat P20 and take a regular one and say a JetCat 80 I suppose because the 20 is so small they actually charge a lot for it so the difference is actually the same so you would think oh small model be cheaper no because of minimum you know the technology of minimizing a really small turbine it's actually a lot more expensive like 1800 pounds for a jet cat 80 something around there i think yeah for a p20 it's like two like 22 2500 something like that but um i actually looked into electrifying a mini one and um, basically a lot of people said the ducting wasn't big enough and you know like th these these inlets here and the ducting inside wasn't suitable um, but no they have actually released one because they wanted to make one that was electric or ducted fan but um, I was slightly concerned that they haven't even got the covering right on the picture model but anyway um, so you see they've got plastic horrible fan in there that they're using but it's beautiful and they always do a load of nice different schemes with these um, flap on the bottom um, so yeah, it's £500 on the Ritmax website, but as I said with the Watt 4, nobody ever seems to do their RRP prices, and that does include some electric retracts. Um, the regular Excalibur, so this is the sport scheme, which is what this is. They'll probably release a lot more schemes. Um, like This is just shy of £400, and you know most places in the UK do 430 They're owned by Horizon fucking Hobby now, which is good, because my dad just bought a glider from them, and it was a disaster slightly uh, flies very nicely now it's sorted but anyway yeah and it's free shipping from Germany so free shipping from Germany 
is cheaper than free shipping and a plane from the UK. And some of them don't even have free shipping. So, yeah. As you can see, sort of very nice. I don't think that has retracts. It just, oh, actually, we have tracks included. Okay. Now, I had a look. Now, the quartz servers that they recommend, more I'm talking, my, vol my voice is dying. It has to have a wing server, they're called. I think there was a picture here, sort of. So yeah, the tail, that's a wing server, because it's so slim, it has to have a special type of servo designed for gliders. I actually couldn't find any that was stronger than what they recommend. Like, I could only find one that's like 2.8 kilos, and they wanted at least 3.5. So I had a look at their servo kit, and the quartz servo kit for this model uses rebranded Turnigy wing servos. I know because my dad had a glider with some of them in, and they were all right. But I wouldn't pay, like, they're like double the price as they are on Hobby King, so just going from Hobby King. Um, so if I actually price one of these up, for me to put it together with the stuff that I would use, a thousand and fifteen pounds, I think it was for like that includes two sets of batteries, four batteries, um, you know, one hundred twenty-five pound on a Doctor Manthrust EDF unit. Um, they're seventeen pound each servos, and you need one, two, three, four, five of them plus um, twenty quid for the elevator servo. Um, so, you know, it all, it all adds up. It all adds up. Um, that also included a 100 pound receiver that I probably wouldn't need because I've probably got one I can use. Um, but yes, I have a Taft Hobbies Viper Jet, which I really like, but it eats batteries because it could really do with 8S, but it's only 6S, and the 6S cook very, very quickly and it's necking up a few batteries. So, that's not been flown recently until I can find a suitable battery and buy them. Um, but yeah, that is something I will definitely look into in the future. Now, for something very expensive to something not very expensive, the Scratch and Dent section of Hobby King, under the Hobby King Deal section, if you scroll down the left-hand side, uh, there. The Let me just make sure I rest this happy so I don't rattle on for no reason, yeah. Um, so... The Scratch and Dent section is sort of like, we'll take this random LiPo, for example. I said, we'll take this random LiPo, for example. And it says at the top, X display item in original packaging. That's not always the right thing. The reason I've been looking at this is I presume this is where my Hobby King Voltager will end up. So it's basically stuff that's been sent back or stuff that is um, X display or used for pictures. For example, there's a battery somewhere on here unless it's been bought. Oh, this. This, it was green because I was thinking multi-star green batteries. Um, that was used in a photo shoot in Australia, but they don't sell it in Australia anymore. So it had to come over here, even though it says UK Warehouse. Maybe it was UK Warehouse, but anyway. A lot of this stuff is in Australia. Um, but for example, very interesting, this Bixler. Now these are about £65 new. Six, no, I know they're less than 70 more than 60 Anyway, um, very good plane. I have one of these. I bought this exact one. Well, not this exact one, but one with the servos and the motors in. Very good. Um, but this is Scratch and Dent. Now why is it Scratch and Dent? Scratch and Dent Bixler V1, complete model, in new condition, but has two left-hand wings, no right-hand wing. I've suddenly noticed something. If that's a V1, and they haven't specifically put V1.1, then it might still have, like, the servos in the front or whatever, but I'm not sure. Um, well, that says global. What the fuck? I know if there was a global in the UK one, maybe they've swapped it. But, like, it's half price, and it's completely new. The only thing that's wrong with it is it's got two left wings. Now I have one of these, and the only thing that's wrong with it, the only thing that's right with it, is the right hand wing. You know, the front's been bust open, I've flicked the rudder off many times, and snapped the wing on the left hand side. At the end of the carbon spar, up to the aileron across there, and I smacked it into a tree. Uh, th yeah, this plane has been a magnet, magnetised to trees. Um, so it's kind of like, nah, but it, the UK one's gone, so I probably won't. But you know, a spare Bixler for £31, and it still has the motors, the, the servos, which are alright. The servos are alright until you crash, and then they break. Um, but like, some people have really crappy or dead servos when they get an AXN, for example. Um, so yeah, Scratch and Dent is a section you should probably just look at, at once in a week. And obviously like stuff disappears very fast, and there's only like one, or in this case two. But it seems really strange that like there's nothing wrong with this model, but they're selling it for half price. When what they could have done is sent another Bixler in the next one with two right hand wings and then like marked it with pink tape or something really obvious and then all they had to do is take one out of one Bixler, one wing out of one Bixler, one wing out of the other and then you've got two fully pristine, nothing wrong with the models that you can sell for full price. 
So yeah, both the global one and the UK one had only had two left wings. But uh, very interesting. Now, oh, really, fuck's sake. Yeah, I'll enjoy your ad. Thanks for that. I thought these lot had gone ages ago. So if you've not seen this, I posted it in the Rag the Nuts Off group, and then Matt talked about it. But this is despicable. I mean, look at this. So basically, an old boy, an old bloke, bought this. Um, this is his friend. This is not said old bloke. Um, and he let me get this right. So he ordered it. It was two. It was a two hundred dollar model. It's the ME one hundred nine, I think, twin. Um, I don't know. I might have got. I know it's a twin. I don't know the number. Um, he so he bought it, two hundred dollar model plus shipping. Of course, when it gets to Norway, which is where they're from, because he got it from the Chinese warehouse, he had to pay some you know twenty dollars to get it in. It's the they they don't seem to get stung as badly as we do because in our, in the UK we also have the bastards, uh, the delivery companies who when it gets to the UK will charge you twenty quid for doing fuck all and call it an admin charge. Um, they um, you know, we pay the charge, got it, smashed to pieces. Um, and in Norway, by the sounds of it, you can't refuse a parcel. They just note down that it's damaged for you, and then you receive it, and then it's up to you to sort out sending it back. He sent it back, which cost a hundred dollars. And then when it arrived in Hong, well, there was a load of fucking about. And then, um, Hobby King Fan said he could send it back. He paid a hundred dollars to ship it back. When it got there, Hobby King rejected it because they had to pay a twenty dollar charge. The same as all of us do when we have to when we buy stuff from China, especially from Hobby King. Banggood, not as much. In fact, never. <laughs> it's, you know, I mean, I haven't done that many orders, but it's always been never for me. Um, so they sent it back again, and from what I understand, he had, he had to then pay the return postage and the fee that was never paid, and another fee. And, this two hundred dollar model ended up costing five hundred dollars because it's and it's it's not even like dented. It, as you can see, the front's been smashed off. I'll I'll play it along a little bit and try and find the wing, which is very interesting. I mean, look at that. There's no fix in that. It's beyond. It is beyond. And I, I mean, I'll try and remember to link all this stuff in the description. But Jesus Christ! And what he's saying there is, I was the first one to open this bag. It's just horrendous. Hobby King are supposedly going to refund him everything if they commit. But the thing is that higher ups at Hobby King seem fine, but they've got shite customer support. That's the big thing. Uh, so yes, things do look to be better. He basically the same thing as me. He he to get the issue sorted. He, I mean, he's a fairly large channel already, six thousand subscribers. Um, for our season, stuff anyway, that's large. Um, but you know, you shouldn't have to make this video, make it public. Hobby King gets so much damage from not having the customer support there. Even if they, even if their customer support was just faster. I mean, when you're in the live chat, it takes three to six minutes for them to say, "Okay, I'll check that for you." Like that's the level of slowness we have. Like they don't even send you an email to say, um, "Okay, we'll look into it or anything." Like I still haven't. Re I've technically received two messages from them, but they were all like three days late to the action actually happening. Another strange goings on. Um, so yeah, Hobby King, more getting smashed for you. Um, another thing, very interesting for those in the UK, Game, which is kind of like GameStop of the UK if you're in America. Obviously, they sell phantoms like every fucker else does. Um, but like Team Black Sheep battery, um, I, I I sort of saw this drone bit. Fusion 4S, because I got an email from Game, because I used to buy a lot of stuff from them. No Free Sky receivers. Uh, a Team Black Sheep, Free Sky Tyrannis. Don't know what the difference is there. I don't like Team Black Sheep stuff. It all seems a bit shy. But anyway. Um, Fat Shark Chargers, Fossil Frames. Dominator 3, TBS Vendettas. That, TBS, that Team Black Sheep Charger is the same one that Hobby King sell for, like... 12 quid I think but anyway um, also yeah game has started selling this um, these and if you want to know where they are it's under tech and then drones uh, but I think game is sort of doing the right thing in expanding because obviously most people are buying are buying games um, online I have you know Steam or Xbox Live or 
PlayStation Network. Um, I'd still buy console games on this because my internet's so appalling. But I buy, but I'm a PC gamer mostly, so I buy all my stuff through Steam. Other than GTA 6, where it was literally faster for it to be delivered by Amazon Prime and installed on discs than it would have taken the three days for it to download the 70 or more gigabyte of game. So anyway, that's interesting. Um, although, uh, I don't know. It's one of these things, oh, there's another drone shop opening near me in like one of the local towns. And a friend of mine went in there because he was like, oh, I'll, you know. And he knew more than they did. Like, they'd lost, they've lost three already. And they asked... And the owners of the shop asked my friend, uh, is it, um, you know, how hard is it to see in line of sight? Do you always have to FPV? And it's like, you should know this before you open the store. Please. It's just such a, well, okay, we're going into this to grab the cash. We will learn as we go along. No. Why? Um. Yeah. And. Um, by the looks of it, they're not keeping them in stores. I mean, they might keep phantoms in store, but I don't think they're going to have a load of these bonkers batteries in stock in different, like, cities. Can I... What's the fucking loading here? Can I put a light? Is it in stock? Ah, so you see you've got UK Drone Store there. Um, basically, from what I understand, it's an agreement with Dronebit. If you don't know who they are, they're a quad company. Because when this got brought to my attention again, it was because the Raggy Frames, um, that I, I know the guy from, um, is also having his stuff put on here through Dronebit. Um, so yeah, slightly concerning, slightly exciting. Um, it's one of these things where I might still have some game points on a card somewhere, but like, well, I'll go and buy like a, a 4S 1300 battery, because, you, know, you know, say I get it for 15 quid instead of 25, then I know it's a battery I'll use. Uh, anyway, yeah, I mean, there's not enough, st like, they sell frames, but they don't sell motors, or speed controllers, or props. Anyway, next up, the EF Extra was released, but I'm going to talk about that, I'm going to talk about the motor. So, if you don't know, uh, with the EF Extra, um, you can put, um, it's 3S, 4S, or if you change the speed controller and the prop, um, you can run it on 6, uh, a 5x5 prop on 6S. Now, I used to have a 190 mile an hour fun jet effect. I still have it. Um, we have, like, three of them. Uh, and this was a setup that I used. Um, so feel free to find this video. I just put in 5-cell fun jet up there, as you can see. And it RC foam fighters. Um, so, yeah, 5S, 2200 batteries. This is where I first used Zippy batteries. And those were brilliant. I then ordered a set, some exactly the same. And... They were shied. So, um, yeah. Um, fun jet. 1600 watts, 6 cells. That's very interesting. So I ran it on like a 7x6. I run it like a 7x5 or 7x4 now. I run it originally on a 6x4. Um, yeah, folding cam prop. But, um, so if you look at that. So this is the motor. And the trouble is, is this motor is now only available in Australia. Which is a pain in the anus. Uh, and also, when we first, they didn't have like the prop size there. Which is useful after loads of experimenting. So yeah, 1600 watts. 2,000, 2.3 kilograms of thrust. And what's amazing though, is you can get like, look up the T-Motor F80. And on 6S, that can also get 2 kilograms of thrust. Even though it's only a 22 size mower, so. Bruh. I like T-Motor motors, they're very good. So anyway, um, this motor has a very similar spec. 3536 as opposed to 3648. So that is slightly bigger. Um, but it's slightly higher KV instead of 1450, it's 1850. And it sounds like they recommend a smaller prop. But it's cheaper and available in the UK and the global warehouse. Where it's available just in Australia with the motor. My other motors, for example, I landed at full power and pulled the shaft straight out of one of them, so they're all getting a bit knackered. Um, so, I mean, this motor is something you could generally put on other planes. Trouble is, this motor, so you would mount it to a firewall there and the pole would stick, just the shaft would stick through. Yeah, that's fine for fun jets, but not fine for other things like the Multiplex Fun Fighter. But the trouble is, is this, is this has no shaft on the back, I presume, because they want to save space for, um, 
batteries and stuff. But this is a go-to motor for speed now. If, if they're gonna have, because they've got it in all the different warehouses, if they keep enough stock in, people are gonna be sticking these on many different planes. There, people are also not gonna be afraid to overclock them, sort of. That's a computer term, but you know. Oh, they only recommend a 5x5, five five, but what if I stick a 6x4 on it, or a 7x4, or a 7x5? Because if they burn up, hey, 18 quid and get a new one. Plus, the fucking ridiculous postage in the UK. You know, like 6 quid to send that. What's that, like? $10 shipping? It's not great, really. Whereas, you could have used Royal Mail and another different service instead of just parcel force and it'd be cheaper. Anyway, so yeah, that now is a go-to fast motor for me. That is a motor I'll think about. Trouble is, is it doesn't appear in any of these. Because um, they're not selling this as just a regular motor. They're selling it as a replacement. Whereas with the original... This is the motor. I'm stalling for time. That one was the one originally in the original. Originally in the original. In the original EFX racer. Um, the... F1. So it was 930 watts. Does this say how many watts it is? No, it doesn't. So it doesn't have much information, but. So it was a 3842. This is a 3536. 1300 kV. So. It might be about the same, but they do say this one is, can't do success. So. That's always a question. Um, I say um a lot. I do apologize. It's a horrendous. Um, thing of mine. So, the FX Racer was released, as I say. Here, here are all the pretty colours, and the motor. So, we've got the green one, the red one, the blue one. The red one might be the fastest. I said the red one might be the fastest, and it has 69 on it, which is just funny. Um, the green one looks a little bit... I've, like, if you watch videos of it, it looks a bit too much of a highlighter. Sort of, like it's a strange green. It's not a nice green. Um, and also the green here, I don't know what it's like on the real, on the production ones, but the green on the wings and there doesn't match the tailplane. It uh, doesn't match the fuselage. Uh, and then you've got the blue one, which I'm a fan of blue. And um, also blue is what keeps you calm. Because um, you need calm and precision. Obviously it's 94, which isn't so funny. Bolt, that's cool. But bolt batteries, not really. Um, obviously FPV pod and everything. And that is why... Oh yeah, they've sold out in the UK, which is a fun fact. Oh, they've gone up to 130 quid. The prices on these keep changing all over the fucking place. Like, you gen like if it's 130 quid, you should generally hold off because it'll probably go down again to like 122 or whatever. Like, the price has been all over the place. Um, so yes, I am here to confirm that. I clicked the wrong tab. I will not be getting another one of these because with the Vision Air at least working, it seems strange to have two models of roughly the same type. Um, so I've got batteries that'll fit it. Not recommended. They recommend 65C. I've only got 35C, but if it's got a 60 amp speed controller in it, those batteries can do. Oh yeah, 77 amps. When the max has going to be doing is 66. At some point, I do have two 6S batteries that'll fit in it. I might upgrade the speed controller. But yes, I'm going to be getting one of probably the blue one. In all honesty. Get the blue EFX racer because I don't have anything like it. Like as I say, my front jets are all sort of out of action and need renovation. Comes with an FPV pod. I know I have FPV stuff I can put on it. Um, I ha I did try FPVing the fun jet, but it crashed about a mile away in like ten seconds. So and that's no joke. I thought I was hitting. I was spiraling towards someone um, like like a little shed near where I fly. I wasn't. I was flying. In towards another shed about a mile away, and we only and someone only knew I'd crashed there because all the sheep ran away out the field. <laughs> so yeah, very exciting. But anyway, uh, that is it for the news. An EFX racer will be heading this way. Whenever the voltage issues are sorted out, maybe the price will come down because the pound goes up, or or maybe we'll just descend into paying for EFX racers with bread or something, or or you know three chickens, two bread, and a yak, fifty four. So. Before um, I like finish the video or whatever, because I don't know how I'm gonna edit this. Because there's two parts I'm going to stick in. That's what she said. Anyway, um, so the effects racer. You might think the link could simply be uh, slash EF extra. Uh, no. Fun little thing for you. The EF extra link is hobbyking.com/en/slash 
no, hobbyking.com slash en underscore us forward slash faster dash larger dash internally dash and dash better dash lucky dash version dash of dash ef extra dash one dot html. So essentially it says faster larger internally and better looking version of ef extra or should I read that as faster larger internally and better looking version of ef extra. That's interesting. Is the is the green one the same? Yes, it's just without the Okay, so the green one is faster, larger internally and better looking version of EF Extra. The red one is faster, larger inter internally and better looking version of EF Extra 1. And the blue one is blue, flash bleh. Blue, faster, larger, internally, and better looking version of VFX. The VFX. Oh, you see. So this was clearly a page that was in development. That they never changed the actual link of. Which I think is excellent. Funny, like, little website stuff that going on, going, goes on on people's websites. But yeah, back on to whatever the fuck I was talking about. Uh, but anyway, thank you once again for watching the news. How long was this? This was fucking 36 minutes long. Jesus. Anyway, um, I'll do some small amount of editing to attempt to bundle everything up. But this was recorded on the 12th. No idea when this will go live because we've got editing my YouTube. Uh, not YouTube. My upload seems to be going very slow. It's taking, it's taking about a, a day to upload a 35 minute video on my other channel. So, fun times. Um, that is so slow, I might generally just cancel the upload and start again. But anyway, yes, that's it for this video. Please like if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you're new and comment down below if you have any questions about this. I will try and make, I'll try and save all of the links to all this stuff and have everything, all of the tabs that you have seen linked uh, in the description. So yes, before I start dying of coughing and stuff again, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.